The Node.js team has just merged a very interesting feature that people have been looking for, and that is HTTPS imports. Uh, this is the uh, browser-like feature where you basically specify a URL to the module you want to import, and then it imports it to your project. Obviously, this is has been anticipated because Deno started the project with that feature day one effectively but uh, there are security concerns and um, really some doubts that is why this feature is still experimental how about we jump into it and discuss this all right so it is pull request 36328 and it's called basically https dash import and it is effectively just experimental at this stage uh so it is you need to start your node.js project with a specific flag to enable this feature in order to import an actual https url that points to your module but uh this is effectively it these are the authors of the feature and what i want to uh, what i want to go through is is basically uh let's go ahead and read the uh the documentation part of this because this is the most interesting part of this experimental so this is https and http on ports and we're going to talk about that a little bit uh http to publicly domains to public domains are not enabled and we're going to talk about that because that's a bad idea effectively uh especially on your back end when node.js is running you don't really need to communicate unsecurely with the outside world right that's just a, a recipe for disaster uh, importing network based modules using https and http is supported under the dash dash experimental dash network dash imports flag this allows this allow web browser like imports to work in node.js with few differences due to application stability and security concerns obviously it's gonna it's not gonna be exactly identical to the browser uh, but this effectively uh, bring the Node.js environment to be very, very close the browser. For the longest time, Node.js started with this common JS thing that users require in order to import something, right? Uh, and, and this resource is most of the time points to the NPM registry, public one. Or if you're, uh, if you're a little bit savvy, you would point it to your local enterprise NPM registry the word require never worked in in the browser because uh that's a that's a made up thing right that is no js specific or common js to be specific right um that's why that makes porting javascript files from the node.js environment to the browser almost impossible right uh, because you want to write that's the silly, that's the main selling point of node.js was right hey i want to write one language i want to write one library and i want to use it in the browser and i want to use it in my backend that's the most the, the best selling point of learning javascript right but we know that's not the case until recently and until es6 uh, was launched all right let's continue that are different uh when running in a privileged environment and instead of a browser yeah browsers have course you know these things that's called course where you visit a domain and then uh, your page might send requests to outside domains why am i out of frame let me fix that yeah uh, your page might send requests to domains other than the one you're visiting right uh, this doesn't really happen in 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 these kind of environments you're sending a url and there is no one domain you're visiting there is no concept of course right of course so here's here's one thing that is interesting they made imports limited to http1 and i don't understand why i have a theory i'm gonna share it with you initially when i read this i was like why http1 right so that means your back end right your back end will always support http1 right when i say the back end here the back end the host the uh js module that you're importing from so your node js is actually effectively the client now and the back end the other back end is the effectively the js module right and they are limiting imports so your client which is node.js only talks http1 in the tls communication when it offers the alpn during tls 
it will say, hey, I only support HTTP 1. Nothing wrong with that, but let's just talk about that. So automatic protocol negotiation for HTTP 2 and HTTP 3 is not supported yet. So yeah, uh, the LPN doesn't support HTTP 2 and HTTP 3. Maybe there is a good reason for that. My guess is um, the they did not want to include the HTTP 2 and HTTP 3 libraries, client libraries, by default in the Node.js platform, because it's not included by default, unless this get baked better. And pro probably HTTP 1 is easier, right? After all, right? And plus HTTP 2, they want to they wanna nail that, because it's not really worth uh starting an http http2 session to retrieve one resource maybe if you're importing a lot of stuff right from the same domain a lot of uh, modules from the same domain then http2 is really useful at that case because now uh, you're going to be sending multiple requests at the same time to import all this stuff uh, granted that you they will only do this in a lazy manner if that module is requested then they're going to import it so uh, if that's the case then I still don't see a value of implementing HTTP2. But if you want these module eagerly, the moment Node.js starts, you want all of them. So if you start Node.js with an eager approach, I don't know if you can do that, uh, then HTTP2 will be useful effectively, right? Because of the idea of, you know, streams. And uh, while HTTP1 have the problem of, you know, head of line blocking. HTTP is limited to loop back addresses. Good idea. Beautiful good idea. Why? Uh, so why, why is HTTP bad? If you send a request to download a remote um, module that, um, that uh, uh, to download a remote module into your Node.js uh, client, then if that request is pure http then it's not encrypted so whatever hops your client node.js goes through to download that will be completely in plain text that also mean so the problem is not not reading the content oh you requested i don't know uh the fetch library right who cares i don't really care about people reading what i request that's kind of dangerous but what i care about is people in back in the response, when the response come, they can just change the the content. Hey, this is actually a fetch. <laughs> so and they insert their own malicious module effectively, right? They can easily do this effectively. And even worse, during the request, if they intercept the request before it goes to the actual backend where the module lives, they can redirect. So hey, go to this server instead. They can do all sorts of stuff here. There's an also another problem where with DNS poisoning here. So uh, DNS is really also critical when it comes to that, right? That's why they're limiting HTTP, uh, HTTP import to only local host. So 12700 and basically the whole subnet. <laughs> but, so there is, there is another RFC that uh, kind of limits the loopback here. Because the loopback is just... You really need one IP address if you think about it. 127.0.0.1. That's all when you need, right? But uh, other, but but when we first started, you know, IPv4 way back, uh, they didn't know that they're gonna run off out IPv4 addresses. So this these are how many how many sixty five thousand is this sixty five thousand IP addresses, right? Uh, from yeah exactly one sixty five thousand IP addresses are just set here assigned for the loopback while you only needed one right so that was what at absolute waste so there is an rfc that challenges that they want to return back these loopback addresses all the way to make them publicly addressable 127 just just imagine what could go wrong with that right all the assumptions that all the code out there yeah that was a bad idea but yeah, people need public IP addresses. They want to make, I don't know, 127.16.1.3 a public IP address, publicly addressable, uh, because they are running out of IPv4. Why don't they use IPv6? Beats me. I don't know. People are just scared of new things, I guess. Right. So, Or the 
colon colon one effectively, which is the IPv6 version of a local um, host effectively. Authentication is never sent to the destination server because that, that's something that the browser will do. The browser will detect, hey, you visited this domain before, let me send this cookie, right, effectively. So here's, here's some cookies, right? Only if, if the cookie supports, like it's not same site or whatever. But uh, here's then. So authorization, so and if you have like JWTs, stuff like that is not going to get said. Headers are not sent to the server. Avoid including user info and part of the imported. A security model for safely using these on the server is being worked on. Okay, so they were working on the actual security model. So, uh, yeah, so it has to be public. That's concerning, right? So let's say you built a module that is, I don't know, you have some sort of a IP, IP and is intellectual property, and you want this module to be only served to this, and you want it to be served securely, not only securely, uh, but also only people who are authorized can download it. You can't do that yet. Yeah. Course is never checked on the destination server. Course is designed to allow server to limit the consumer of an API to a specific set of hosts. This is not supported uh, as it does not make sense for a server-based implementation. We know course, right? Course origin resource sharing. So you visit and remain, and uh, yeah, uh, your 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 page that got back wanted to visit other domains that is not the domain it's visiting currently, right? And if it's doing that, then course is some backend property that you send on, on set on these uh, other domains that says hey this guy can't talk to me or oh this this domain can't talk to me or you can make requests from this domain but not this domain right or you can make the request from any domain right like a star that's basically is done through the pre uh flight options we talked about all that stuff in the channel make sure to subscribe to check all this content so yeah it doesn't make sense as i said right Cannot load non-network dependency. This module cannot access other modules than our HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, to still to still access to still access is that the right grammar? To still access local module while avoiding the security concern, pass in references to local dependency. So I, I, yeah, I guess you cannot use FTP or something like that. But yeah, this is this is fascinating, right? So yeah, this is good and all, but I th I th I'm thinking of two issues here. Uh, first of all, I think we need some sort of an allowed list that is configured by default and that is empty by default, right? Uh, and let the user fill it in. Let the user explicitly fill it in. I'd, I'd love this feature. Don't allow me to import from any domain, right? That's just bad. If if the user, by the user, I mean the developer, writing the Node.js code, let them let them write, hey, I, I want to go from, I want to pull from netlify.com. That's even that is bad because Netlify can host anything, right? So you want to specify also the subdomain. So uh, Hussein.netlify.com, right? So this way, uh, if some because if you said uh, Netlify.com, I can create my own shady website on Netlify and have it my own subdomain, and uh, I can send you that, and your code will be will be will be able to import my nasty JavaScript. Uh, file right we see all the bugs all the security concerns with npm all the time right so that's that's effectively bad but yeah so that's the first thing the second thing is um, we need a way for how do you say this uh the digest to we need a way to authenticate uh the modules i just downloaded i want to make sure that if i'm downloading fetch can i check uh some sort of uh hash that tells me oh this is the actual this is the uh, the, the the hash of the fetch on port so that it, of this version so that you can, you can do local check and you can do it uh, in an offsite channel obviously you cannot do it in the same channel you can say hey i want to download fetch but i know fetch hash is always this so even if someone did do a man in the middle with the you cannot do it with HTTP because they block you. But if they manage to do it with HTTPS, with do, uh, DNS poisoning, you you are still safe, right? Because uh, 
uh, you have some sort of a validation effectively at the modules level. I think these are the two issues. I don't know, guys, what do you think about this? Are you excited about these uh, HTTPS import? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.